Well, guys, uh, thank you very much for coming along. Um, we appreciate it. Um, even if maybe it's not the best time we're discovering. Um, we're just sort of doing some experimenting here at the moment. But um, no, look, welcome to the episode one. We love calling our different um, weeks in our stage two ideator program episodes, um, keeping in touch with various different space themes. Um, but uh, now this session, look, it's not going to take too long today. We just really just want to introduce you to what stage two really is, um, which I'm sure is what you're all really interested to hear about, especially if you were a part of the boot camp and you're totally new to the whole Moonshot experience. Um, so uh, because I know that you can't see me at the moment, uh, my name's Troy McCann. Uh, if you haven't met me before, I'm the founder and, uh, and for the first uh, many, many years of, of Moonshot, the, uh, the, the person that sort of you know, pulled everything together. Um, but also here with me today is Sasha, who I know all of you uh, know. She was incredible throughout the boot camp. Um, Hello. Hey, Sasha. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, so we're, we're just going to go through uh, talking to you about, you know, what is this idea that we keep talking about? Uh, what comes after the boot camp? Uh, and what is in it for you with regards to space uh, and all of the other things? So, um, if you have any questions, there's only a few of us here today, so feel free just to interrupt. Um, I don't consider that rude at all, um, so please just do it. Um, one of the cool things about this technology is that you can do that. Um, just ask your question, and we'll uh, do our best to answer it. Uh, so, we're going to start off with, if, if my control is going to work, is a bit of an overview. So uh, we're going to talk about, so what is space? So I know that sounds like a bit of an obvious question, but I think it's a really, really good place for everybody to start, um, especially because I really think that we think of space in the wrong way. Uh, if you heard me speak before, you know, I talk a lot about different perspectives and the need to find different perspectives. Well, I want you all to at least leave here today with a different perspective around what you think space is. Uh, we're also going to talk a little bit about what is Moonshot. Um, some of you might know what Moonshot is all about, some of you might not. Some of you might know about Moonshot from a particular perspective, but not the overall perspective. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, of course, what is this ideator? Who is it for? How does it work? And uh, what do you gain by doing it, if you were to do it? Um, but the more important part, what's the commitment? And then we're going to talk about what's next. So lots of questions, and I know even afterwards there's going to be a lot more questions that come after that. Um, so uh, that's what we're here to help you with. So. What is space? Uh, so you can see here a picture of our great tiny little spaceship Earth um, and everything around it we think of as space. Um, now I think that that's the wrong place to, you know, wrong way to look at space because you, as you can see the planet is inside of the universe and so everything around us, everything we can see, touch, hear and smell, that is all space. Um, but this is our planet Earth and this is our world, everything that's inside this little circle. Um, this is where every single person that has ever been born that we know of, you know, that aren't aliens somewhere else in the universe has been born. Um, this is where all of history, as far as we know, uh, that is relevant has happened. Um, this is our entire world. It's our economy. It's our society. But this is what's happening. Our world is expanding. Um, our economy is trying to push beyond the confines of our atmosphere. We're getting new kinds of technologies like satellites for GPS that help us do financial transactions as much as help us uh, orient ourselves around our city. Um, we've got data that comes from satellites that help our farmers optimize their yields in crop, uh, for their crops so that we can buy the food from a grocery store from week to week. Um, space underpins everything that we do in our economy, uh, whether we recognize it or not, and that's increasingly becoming even more significant. Um, as you will have discovered through the boot camp, if you're part of that, you know, Martian toilets are a thing that I like to talk about all the time. Um, if we are to go to Mars, we know that we need to have at least a million people to, to have a sustainable economy. Um, that means that we need to be able to mass manufacture toilets that can survive and, you know, and work on Mars, be incredibly efficient, uh, recycle all of the what would be waste product that we put into it. And we don't have a first world style sewerage system over there. And so what does that mean for the technology then as we make it really cheap to produce for all of the billion or so people that live in slums here on Earth as uh, subject to disease? So going to space isn't something that I think we should think about as, you know, as a backup plan in case something goes wrong here on Earth. It's about how do we actually create, how do we fix our problems here on Earth. The only way that we can do it is by going to space. And we are expanding our world by going to space. Just like when we you know, spread across the African savannah for the first time, when we migrated away from Africa from the first time, when we crossed the first sea in the ocean, um, when uh, you know, 
the uh, you know 60,000 years ago, people first uh, travelled to what we now call Australia. At the time, was also Southeast Asia. Um, so this is our next giant leap: is, is making that step into space. Um, so this is our world, and it encapsulates, and it will encapsulate these other planets and these other celestial bodies as we reach them. It's not that we're creating that backup on Mars; it's that we're going to create an economy that goes between the Earth, the Moon, and Mars. Um, so. All of this is to say is that we need space so that we can solve massive problems. Um, whether it is, like examples, you know, using these satellites so that farms can uh, optimise their, their crop yields, um, whether it's doing new things like building microchips more easily where we don't have to use extensive amounts of water or even use, you know, usage of land. We're discovering new medicines, and the ability to manufacture th synthetic organs that you cannot manufacture in the presence of gravity uh, because of you know, reasons that I'm very happy to go into later if you're curious to know more. Um, and of course, you know, topical at the moment, we can monitor and bring justice to war criminals. This is something that a lot of people um, have been surprised about up until recently. Now, it's, uh, now it seems to be sort of in the mainstream consciousness. And this, this idea of space being so critical to everything we do is just going to become uh, more and more commonplace. So if you're here at the moment, you're very much at the, you know, at the right place at the right time because space is where that next industrial revolution is happening. Not where it will happen, it's happening now and that's what we want to do at Moonshot. We want to help you be a part of that, uh, that movement, that change, and to build that better future for our world. So we want to cultivate a, a community of people that dare to actually look up at the stars and to be inspired, to say, hey, actually, there's an you know, infinite amount of opportunity out there if we're willing to go out there and grasp it. Um, so let's look up and let's try to think about how do we solve these big problems and let's think big and not think about how we can't do things but try to work out ways that we can do things. Uh, so that's what Moonshot is all about. Um, the other key thing that's happening with space is that not everyone's a computer scientist. So you know, back in the day, uh, if you wanted to use a computer, you had to be a computer scientist. Um, it was like being a rocket scientist. But today, everyone's got phones in their pockets. Um, you, know, you don't have to have any special expertise to use them. Um, toddlers are able to use iPads and things like this now. Well, a similar thing, not exactly the same, but a similar thing is happening with satellites. So satellites today are like supercomputers or you know, mainframe computers back in the 1960s and 1970s. Um, you have to be a rocket scientist to be able to build them, to be able to use them, to be able to get any real benefit from them. Um, well, that's all changing. So soon space is uh, only really going to become accessible, not when we have rockets to launch us from A to B, uh, but it's when designing and building and using you know, the applications that derive from spacecraft become as easy as ordering a car online or using a smartphone. And so these are the applications we want to inspire you to think about and to say, hey, actually, maybe we can build that. Uh, and at Moonshot, our job is to help you get the capital that you need, the mentors that you need, the inspiration that you need, the teams that you need so that you can turn that idea into something really incredible. Uh, and so this is basically our model at Moonshot. Um, I'm an engineer, so <laughs> I've been developing this. I love my feedback loops. Uh, and it's really, really critical. So um, the idea is that we've pulled together some amazing people to invest time and money into startups. And when we say startups, we don't just mean the founders and we don't just mean you know, the startups itself. We mean you know, the students that are going to be working in these companies. Uh, we also do mean the founders, but we also mean the operators, so the amazing people that are going to help build those companies. They don't necessarily want to run a business, but they want to be involved in building a really amazing project that's actually going to move the needle on human progress. And we also mean the investors, people that have capital and they want to allocate into something that means something um, you know, to, to them um, that, that, uh, that is really fulfilling. So they need to understand, well, what's science fiction, what's not? How do they understand space a little bit more? Uh, and so as we work with these startups and these groups and these people and bring them together in certain strategic ways, we can compound their success so that they can get more investment and they can grow their businesses and eventually they'll get return on investment. And so now we've got a whole bunch of new founders and operators and as well as mentors and, and investors that have new time and money to then and expertise to put into the next generation. And so this is what we're trying to build at Moonshot. This is why we call it the Moonshot model because we're trying to build a system where eventually our founders and our operators today so all of you guys in a few years time can hopefully have really successful space businesses that you're a part of and then the ability to help coach and grow and invest in the next generation as well so that we can keep on compounding uh, you know, the growth of our commonwealth um, to build you know, these amazing things for our future. So what does all that mean? Well, Moonshot is an alliance of global space pioneers that are investing in and mentoring the next generation of startups with ambitious ideas about accelerating humanity. This is the crux of what we are. 
So um, hopefully, you know, this is something, you know, especially if you were part of the boot camp, you probably didn't hear of this. You might not have heard of this before, but this is really what it means to be a part of Moonshot. Um, and so, uh, yeah, we hope that this, this is something that excites you. Um, so we have 37 mentors. You will not have met all of them, and they, we obviously couldn't fit everybody on the screen here. Um, this is just a snapshot from our website. Um, so apologies to any mentors that are watching this at the moment, and you're like, hey, where am I? Um, so we've got 37 mentors. We've got 20 mentors in waiting. So our mentors are all people that have actually put money into our, uh, our joint fund. Um, so we've got a lot of people in our community beyond this as well that sometimes you know feel like they are mentors and they're amazing people. But to have the, to to have that special title of being a mentor, you need to be someone who's contributing your time as well as your money. So mentors in waiting, the people that are saying, "Hey, I'm you know, banging down our doors, saying, hey, when can we invest? Because we want to uh, we want to work with that next uh, you know that next generation as well." Um, so they're on the wait list and, and we're just setting all that up at the moment. We've also got 25 alumni startups and each of our alumni are also another great source of, you know, resource of experience and expertise and, and people that, uh, that you should be reaching out to as operators and founders as you're looking for jobs or inspiration and ideas or partnerships and all this sort of thing. So all this says is that there's a huge community at Moonshot to leverage. Um, this is the alliance that we're talking about. It's massive and it, it spans the globe uh, and beyond. So, how do we do all this? Um, sure, it's all good and well to say, all right, so we got this, you know, this model and we work with founders and operators, all these different groups, but how do we do that? Uh, especially, you know, there's a whole bunch of different things that happen to grow a successful space startup. So we've built what we call our space elevator. Sadly, it's not a real space elevator. Um, maybe one of you can help us build a space elevator one day. Um, this is more a metaphorical sense, but it's really, a, it's like a ladder of opportunity. Uh, and so you will, you've all, you know, most of you, I think, just having a glance at the moment, have participated in stage one, um, which is our boot camp. And that's really a gateway so that you can help find people uh, who want to build the future. Uh, and it's a gateway for us to introduce you and entice you exactly as we've done with, you know, brought you along to, to this event, which is stage two, um, where we hope to give you a little bit of extra time and we hope that you can make some you know, more friends and meet more people so that you can really turn some ideas into some bigger projects. And so that might be projects that you take on from the boot camp, uh, might be projects that you've got you know, as new ideas, new inspiration. Perhaps you weren't even a part of the boot camp when you're here because you say, well, I want to learn about what it takes to be a part of a space startup because you'd like to work in one. Uh, or you'd like to think, you know, can you come up with an idea or work with the, on a project that has a great idea? This is the place to make that happen. Uh, and so we'll talk a little bit more about this in, in a slide uh, or two in, in, a, in a little while. Um, stage three is what would come after this. And we're actually, uh, we've got applications open at the moment for stage three, which is a pre-accelerator, which is all about transforming those projects once you have what we call problem solution fit into impactful businesses. So taking that first step to become, to go from just a scrappy team, putting something together into a still scrappy team, to be honest. Uh, but you know, you've incorporated a company, you know, we want to help make it reduce all of the friction in doing all of the tricky things so that you can say, great, now how do we make this into a business that can help real customers um, you know, in some sort of way. Stage four is our flagship program. That's where we make $75,000 investments into still very early stage companies um, that are looking to, to either get their first customers or even put their first technology into space, for example. And that's where we work with groups like, say, Being Systems is one example, who has these great um, you know, services for parabolic flights and testing and evaluation and all this sort of thing, just to make it so much easier so that you can prove that the technology and the products that you're developing that can solve a really valuable problem uh, actually work so that you can get more investment or get more customers. And we just try to make that really fast, which is why we call it an accelerator. And stage five um, is what we hope to do one day at Moonshot. Uh, and we work with a lot of companies at this stage, particularly those companies of our mentors. Um, but that's where we're you know, really about helping those growth stage space startups. They're a little bit more sophisticated. Um, you know, they're usually companies, you know, eventually we want to have a larger venture capital fund that can signal to other VC funds that aren't necessarily in space that, hey, you've got a moonshot stamp of approval. And so you re should really uh, consider putting some money into this uh, because everyone's incentives are aligned. And that's the key to each of the stages of the space elevator. It's all about saying who are the different stakeholders that we need to bring together at all of these different stages um, so that we can make magic happen and help filter the best opportunities up to that next level. Um, and so that's why we call it a space elevator. We're slowly elevating and bubbling up um, each of the different people into groups, into teams to help make magic happen. Oops, wrong way. 
Uh, so the boot camp, most of you are familiar with this, you know, that 48 hour online hackathon that I hope you all enjoyed a lot. And we've got our amazing uh, award ceremony happening tomorrow at 5 p.m. AST. Uh, so I hope you're all coming along to that as well. Um, I don't need to talk too much about this one because I think, you know, you've, you've seen it all. You've been there, you've done it. But um, so it's really cool. It's really our gateway, like I said, to bring a whole new diverse range of people, particularly on the skills side, um, to the space economy. Now, the Ideator, which is what we're here for today, uh, it's a six month part time program, but that's not quite all encapsulating either. Uh, it's really just an opportunity for you to learn from our mentors and alumni about what it takes to build a space tech business. Um, we run one to two online sessions each week, just like this one. And this one you know, might only go for half an hour or so. Sometimes I'll go up for, up for an hour. Um, and it really, you know, it's a, it's a, we're providing a framework so that teams can build minimum viable products and tackle commercial challenges. Think about what it might mean if you had that boot camp at 48 hours and you had you know, a month, two months, three months, whatever it happens to be, to actually build it out. And you've got a lot more time to build it properly. And we're also bringing in each week you know, people who have built space startups and different parts of it that you need to consider so that you can draw from their experience and inspiration and you can reach out to them for, for help and advice and, you know, and things like this as well. Um, so what we're doing that's a little bit different this year that we haven't done in the past is saying, look, we're going to put out the same challenges that we have for the boot camp. And if you'd like to work on those challenges, please do. If you'd like to work on something totally different, we'd, we're totally happy to help you sort of brainstorm and, and ideate. It's the whole idea. Come up with some different ideas that you might want to work on. But we're going to finish all of this up with another kind of pitch competition. Um, and so that way it gives you a little bit of an incentive to say, all right, let's see what we can come up with. Um, but I don't want anyone to feel bad if you're know, four weeks in, you're like, okay, this idea is not working and you know, maybe I need to find a new team. That's the idea. This is really your sandbox so that you can try to learn, to fail, and then to succeed. Uh, it's all about running a lot of different experiments and trying to work out what works and what doesn't. Um, so you can see here on the right side, we've got a really, really full list of different uh, episodes. You don't have to come to every session, although we'd love for you to come to every session. We're going to try to track who does and who doesn't. Um, but I strongly advise if you want to make the most of this, um, please do. Um, this is a very, very valuable program. Usually, uh, you know, I think groups that run these kinds of sessions would charge, you know, or do they not even I think they do they charge thousands of dollars for this sort of thing we really believe in having this as really open access um, so if you you know to get the most out of it uh, you know you'll get you'll get much more out of it than what you put in um, just put it that way so if you get any questions about these different sessions feel free to ask uh, when we're when we get towards the end maybe uh, so pre-accelerator, just to, to give you context to what that is. So you know, so you spend some time, you're working with a team on stage two, developing a you know a concept. We'll get you talking to some actual real customers that might want to you know to use that. Um, you'll really stress test a lot of the initial assumptions that you have, and then you reach a point. You're like, well, actually, we've got a really solid solution to this problem. All these customers are telling us if we can build that, they will give us money to actually you know to to use it that's the point where you know you're ready for the pre-accelerator. So at the moment, it's a 10-week mentor-driven program. All of our programs are very mentor-driven. Um, and it's really about saying, look, you know, we're going to give 5,000 what we call kickstart investments. We know it's not a large amount of money, but it's really that idea of saying, look, how do we help you become a real company? You know, we want to give you the means to do it. We want to help take away a lot of that uh, administrative friction. Uh, and for our mentors choosing which teams to bring into this program, because we've only got six spots this year, um, starting in July 2022, um, the mentors are asking themselves, can they see a future where they put $10,000 of their own money into this team? Um, so it's, yeah, so that, you know, just, just to help you sort of put yourself in their shoes for a little bit. And so then that, that program, it's all about you know, setting up a company, that idea of problem solution fit, um, discovering more about your customers, it used to be known as market research, but it's a little bit more than that. And also about how do you actually set up your team structure. And so you notice that a lot of these themes that we're talking about with stage two and three are reflected in the boot camp, but of course, you've only got 48 hours in that. So it's, you know, there's a lot to, lot to unpack, and so there's a lot of, program, a lot of uh, information in these programs. Uh, you were probably very excited about our accelerator, if any of that excited you before. Um, we don't know exactly when we're going to run this again. We're hoping maybe by the end of this year, but we're not committing to anything just at the moment. But it's a 14-week uh, mentor-driven program for those companies that are a little bit more sophisticated again. So this year, we're aiming to invest $75,000 into six more teams. We, we like having cohorts of no more than six so that we can spend enough time with each of the teams. Um, and just for your reference, the mentors are asking at that stage, would they actually put $10,000 of their own money into that company 
And can they justify that position to other mentors, especially because um, you know, they're actually putting significant money in? Uh, into into that one. So for a lot of mentors, it is dipping their toes in the water and they're looking to make investments afterwards. So they want to get to know you. They want to work with you and see what you're like, um, you know, to work with and to, for them to decide, hey, once they've finished this program uh, and they're looking to do another fundraise, uh, should I, you know, invest in them again at that next level? Um, so this is a this is a really really important thing to get to know some of these mentors uh, and and these investors and to um, you know, like I said, you get out what you put into into the moonshot community. So uh, let's coming back to stage two and sort of what we're going to be doing for the next few weeks. Um, you know, for this um, you should already familiar at least somewhat with the Discord. I know everyone. I'm still new to Discord as well. It's a little bit different to what we're used to, but it's a really great place to discuss news, share ideas, and build together. And that's the entire idea of this stage two uh, ideator program. Um, so if you are really really keen to make the most of it, there's really probably two areas that you want to be. Uh, spending a lot of time in on the Discord. There's the incubator space, so that section of, um, of channels where you, know, you can ask the network questions, that's where you can pitch your, you know, practice your pitching and storytelling. Um, you know, if you're a student and you're looking for, you, know, you want to share and, and talk about uh, educational programs, graduate programs, this kind of thing, opportunities to work in space, there's a channel for that. Um, you know, if you need to get access to a mentor, uh, if you want to talk about grants that are available, this is the place for it to be. Um, this is all about that very, very early stage stuff. Uh, and uh, so don't be afraid to talk and ask questions because the more that you share, the more that you discuss news, the more that you build together, um, you know, the more that we all, we all grow. It's a rising tide that lifts all boats. Now the other place, especially if you're more on the engineering side, we've got a makerspace. Uh, it might be an interesting concept to think about that isn't in a physical place. You know, we unfortunately do not have virtual uh, laser cutters and CNC machines and things like this. Um, but what we do have is, is a lot of expertise within our community on building different parts of spacecraft, different parts of technology, whether it is the software, whether it's doing space mission operations, whether it's building electronic circuits, uh, robots, uh, silicon chips even. Um, this is a place to have a chat. So um, it's a little bit quiet at the moment, starting to get some traction in there. Um, but especially if you're a student and you're working on, say, a CubeSat project or something like that, this is the place to go. Um, there's really no place on the internet just yet that incorporates all these, all these things uh, for discussing the more technical areas of, you know, how do you actually build stuff? You know, what, are there any tutorials around, I want to learn how to make, you know, um, certain, you know, I want to learn how to make a CubeSat. This is where we want people to go. So we're trying to create these areas here so that you can uh, get access to the people, uh, to the expertise and the knowledge that you need to build and learn how to build great things. Now one of the key things about doing the, uh, the uh, ideator um, is that as you go along, uh, it's good practice to build a bit of a routine uh, to join these sessions each week for one, but also to try to always have at least some kind of project related space that you're working on. And then once when you do that, to dive in and to embrace being held accountable, because uh, we'll do it if, as long as you're willing to commit, we're willing to hold you accountable. Um, you know, send us a weekly cadet log. We've got a thread for a channel for it. Uh, and afterwards, you know, Sasha will sort of, you know, she'll, she'll run you through and, and sort of show you exactly where to go. Um, but we got this concept we call cadet logs. Really, really simple. It's five lines. So each week, write a post, one line. What are you working on? All right, I'm building a, a Martian toilet and working on commercializing that first uh, on Earth. Cool. So in that last week, you know, what are the good things that have happened? How have you progressed it? Like, what have you worked on? Have you spoken to, you know, 10 customers, that sort of thing? Just one line. What were the good things that happened? The third line. What are the bad things that happened? What didn't quite go your way? What sort of held you back a little bit? Uh, and embrace it. Don't be afraid of talking about it because that's where the learnings happen and that's what you want to hear about. So especially for the ugly, you know, what's something really bad that happened? You know, maybe you had a, an employee that uh, got sick with COVID or something and so that meant that you lost a customer or something. We need to talk about these things so that we can share it uh, and we can help each other and this sort of thing. So five is, is a really important one. And a lot of people don't get this quite right. So do you have any asks for the network? Because we've got a very, very valuable network. And if you have a very specific ask that you can target it so that when someone reads it, they can say, oh yes, okay, I know someone that works at company X um, uh, that, is doing, you know, that is doing this particular kind of mission operations, I can introduce you to them. Um, if you ask a question, it's sort of like, oh, do you know anyone that's looking for a, to hire an electronics engineer? That's probably quite broad and you, everyone's going to look at it and say, oh, maybe I know someone. You know, so you want to you lead people to, to you know, a, a very specific ask 
um, that someone can help you with. And if you have at least one, then you know that's one thing that the Moonshot Network can help you with each week. And after 12 weeks, you know, 13 weeks, 14 weeks, 16 weeks, whatever, these things compound over time. So if you can do this from week to week, um, you'll notice that very quickly you'll compound your own success and you'll build some very, very amazing things. And so that's, that's what we're here to do. This is sort of like a personal accelerator in a lot of ways. And that's how when I first came up with the concept of the ideator back, you know, five-ish years ago now, um, that's what I thought about it like. It was like a personal accelerator for people that want to get into the space industry. Uh, so I won't read through all of these things, but I just wanted to put them here because um, it takes, you know, we need to foster a particular kind of culture, I think, um, to, to really, really grow this stuff. Um, recognize that, you know, the things that you're going to be working on, no one's done these things before. Uh, and especially, uh, I know a lot of teams recognize this, a lot of the feedback that we got, which is really good. Uh, from the boot camp was, you know, people just being like, oh, I just like, it, it was just, it was really tough. Um, you know, I hadn't really thought too much about marketing before or any of these other things. Or, you know, some of the marketing people like, oh, I hadn't really thought about all the challenges on the engineering side. Um, but it's really good to keep some perspective around all this. And there's that key word again. Um, no one has done these things before. Nobody knows what the right way to do things are. Um, when you speak to mentors or people for advice, everyone's going to tell you all different things. Your skill that you have to develop is working out uh, which advice to take and how to process it and how to, you know, what you actually need to do next. But key to this is that no one's done these things before and that's why we're doing this. If it was something that someone's done before, then it's not moving the needle. So be inspired by that. Um, you're going to be given a lot of autonomy to, through, throughout all this. We're not going to chase you up. This isn't like a university course and even, you know, it's not even like, you know, it's not like high school. Um, if you don't do, you know, what I'll describe here as your homework, that's fine. Um, but uh, you know you need to embrace your ability as well to bring your fresh perspectives to discussions. So do get active. You know, try to get active, even if you're not a very social person. Um, get active online. Discuss your ideas. You know, if you see some space news that you find interesting, start. You know, state uh, post about it and and you know state an opinion. Talk about it. Ask people what their opinions are. That's the best way that we can learn from what uh, what else is happening around the world. Um, especially at the early days of anything, you know, embrace the chaos, um, move really, really quickly, do things really scrappy. Um, don't worry too much about establishing you know, a lot of processes and systems. Uh, I think a lot of, you know, especially if you're forming a team, you're like, oh, we've got to build a company. A lot of teams spend way too much time on you know, trying to do things, what, you know, what I'm putting in quotes, air quotes, the right way. Um, it's a, a lot of it is a waste of time. Focus on actually building that solution for, for a problem, for a real customer, uh, someone who's really going to benefit. Um, and that's the only thing really you should be focusing on. Uh, let Moonshot help you with the rest so that you don't get distracted. Not everything works out as planned as well, and that's okay. You know, if in week four um, you realize that a thing you've been working on just isn't that great, uh, or the team isn't working or whatever, that's fine. Disband it and find something new. That's the whole idea with this. We want to give you that sandbox. Um, so there's no shame in anything at all. In fact, I, you know, I think that the more... Uh, the more times you fall over and you get back up again, that's you know that's where you really um, that's where you really build your credibility. Um, and following that, uh, where you can, don't shy away from from getting unfiltered feedback. You'll notice that a lot of the mentors um, will not hold back you know, feedback. They'll be very blunt. Embrace that. Uh, you want that. I can tell you as someone who's been building startups, you know, it uh, it can get a little bit frustrating sometimes when you know that even your own investors are holding back feedback because they're like, you know, they don't want to. They feel like they don't want to upset you or anything. So when you when you're part of a community that actually give you real solid feedback, be like, great. I can now action that, that's good because you know that they really care and you know that you can objectively act on it and it's the best way to grow. Um, which that flows on nicely too, you know, embrace the adversity. These things are hard. Uh, if it was easy to solve these big problems, everyone would be doing it and everyone would be successful. Um, adversity is where you find the most valuable opportunities and it's the only way that we can grow together if we support each other in that ad adversity. So. We're all going to embark on this really, really difficult challenge over the next few weeks, if you so take up uh, this challenge. Um, and so uh, let's help each other do that so that we can all be successful. So who's ready? And if you're not, that's good. Because if you are ready, then you, know, you haven't been pushing hard enough. So let's go.